Wonderful Marjorie Zengary, and I'm here with Amy Longard from Amy Longard Nutrition. Thanks for being here with us today, Amy. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here and, and doing another cooking video with, with you guys. So fun. The last one was amazing with those crostinis. I loved that. So delicious. Yeah, so now what we're in the new year and we're looking for some healthy alternatives for quick meals for the week, mm -hmm. for weeknights. Mm -hmm. So you've come up with this recipe. What is what is it we're gonna make today? So today we're gonna make a tempeh bolognese and this is something that I personally love making. I learned how to do this in culinary school and it was one of the things that really made me feel so excited because it was something that I liked before I was plant-based or vegan. It's something I really loved was a bolognese sauce. So when I figured out how to do it with tempeh and I mm. learned at school, it was game changer. So tempeh, for those of you that don't know, it's a fermented soybean and I'm gonna hold it up here. So you can see, you can actually see the little soybeans in there. Uh, tempeh is one of my favorite ways actually to eat soy because it's super healthy. Uh, it's, it's very bioavailable. It's easy to digest and absorb mm -hmm. because of the fermentation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a huge fan of fermented foods, hence why I love Zengary, but also why I love tempeh and, and other fermented foods as well. So if you are new to eating soy products, this is really one of the best ways to go super high in protein. Um, and it's, it's quick and easy to work with once you practice. When you first see it, it might be a bit intimidating, but then try it a few times and it's, it's super easy to use. Great texture too. Yeah, so you can see the nice little texture there of the soybeans. Um, so what we're gonna do with this is actually, this is the base of our bolognese. So this would be used instead of say, um, any animal products like beef, if that was gonna be used as the base. Some people actually use lentils. You could do that as well for bolognese. There's mm -hmm. lots of options. I've heard of like a lentil walnut bolognese, but today mm -hmm. we're gonna use tempeh. About an onion cut up, about two medium to small to medium carrots mm -hmm. just cut up. And then we also have our celery. So this is the base following the tempeh. And we also have minced garlic. How many cloves is that? I would say it's about two cloves in there. Okay. So two cloves of minced garlic and about a teaspoon each of oregano and basil. Dried? Yes, these are dried. If you want, you could add an actually near the end of the cooking. If you'd like to add in some fresh, you could do that near the end. Okay. So dry will go in the beginning. You'll yep. see as we go along, fresh herbs, you're always gonna wanna add in near the end of cooking because they're really delicate. Amazing. Um, I also love using the strained tomatoes. These are from Farm Boy. So if anyone lives in Ontario and they're watching this, you can find this in Farm Boy, but you can find very similar strained tomatoes at Loblaws or any health food stores. It's very readily available. And if you can't find this, you simply take a can of tomatoes, whole tomatoes or diced tomatoes, and you can blend them Put and then vitamin. strain them up. Yeah. So this is really, I just start with this and I use basically this exact size jar. Okay. So we're also going to be using a bit of wine today. In our last one, we used beer. We're going to use wine in this one. If you don't want to use wine, you could use a, you know, a red wine vinegar instead. Okay. Uh, we're using Baco Noir, which is from Prince Edward County, I believe. So it's Sandbanks. Is Sandbanks, yeah. Yep. So I'm going to add about a cup of this. We'll see that later. And some olive oil. And we're also going to have a tiny bit of maple syrup in case we need it for later. The tomatoes can be a bit strong, so sometimes you want to soften the flavor with a bit of sweetener. And of course... Acidity, yes. Yeah. Acidity, well, it can be a bit much for some people when they're eating tomatoes, so mm -hmm. we add a little tiny bit of maple syrup for that. And we're gonna have salt and pepper as well. Of course, I love pepper in our last recipe. We used a lot of pepper on our mushrooms, and oh, yes. we've also got pepper today uh, for our tempeh bolognese. And finally, this is instead of noodles, we've got a zucchini. So we're actually gonna get Linda to turn this zucchini into noodles shortly. So for those of you that have not done that yet, you need a spiralizer at home. Or we could just snap our fingers. I think we could do that. I buy them made, for, made for TV, right? Yeah, snap your fingers, go to Farm Boy, and you'll find already pre-spiraled zucchini. Isn't that amazing? You can buy spiralized vegetables. Exactly. Well, it's great because as we were saying last video, we wanted to encourage people and help them eat more vegetables. And yep. having a spiralized vegetable is a great way to add it in, sneak it in with noodles, or eat it instead of noodles. Yep. So there's so you lots can do of half and half. Exactly. And a lot of people do that. So that I'd say you know, traditional noodle that they would use for pasta mm -hmm. and then mix in a little bit of zucchini. Brilliant. It is brilliant. So we're going to get back to that in a little bit. And then for this one, we are using uh, the, the creamy Swiss. Creamy Swiss. And that is currently in the freezer. And there's a reason we are doing that. So when you freeze the creamy Swiss, you're able to grate it on top mm. of the finished product, which we will show you at the end of the video. Yes. So we'll get started now. So I'm just going to warm a little bit of oil in the pan. And as I always like to say, if you are a no oil or you're not using oil in your cooking, of course you can use water. Basically what we want to do is just brown the tempeh a bit and 
just it, it has a little bit of a bitterness in the flavor. I don't know if you tried tempeh I have, alone. Yeah. It can be a bit bitter and it has sort of that fermenty taste. Yep. So you will notice that if you don't either steam it or lightly cook it before using it in recipes. So here's what tempeh looks like as a whole block. I've already started crumbling off pieces. For this recipe, we're just going to break crumble it up with it. our fingers. So if you buy it frozen, you're going to want it to thaw out a bit. Oh yeah. And then crumble it in. But see how nice and easy it just crumbles right in there. And then I'm gonna add the rest in. From our nice coconut bowls. So I'm gonna heat this up a little bit. Move this around. So we just wanna cook this for a couple minutes just to lightly brown it. Okay, so it'll turn a little brown, golden? A little golden brown, yeah. Okay. This is key with tempeh, is that you really just wanna cook it just a bit or steam it. So adding the water at the base, you'd be able to steam it. In this case, we're just gonna brown it up a little bit. For this, we'll use one zucchini. Depending on how many people are there are eating with you in this feast, you could have upwards of two or three. So, so you'd say like one zucchini per person? I'd say person, one a zucchini, or? a half a zucchini to a zucchini is usually sufficient. And we'll see when we start spiralizing it just how much zucchini you can make, how many noodles you can make with this. Okay. Just gonna keep an eye on my tempeh over here. Yeah. Oh, we're That's close quarters. Can, uh, can't spiralize All right, here we go. that going is it coming out yeah perfect great so amazing how easy this is so I just have to show everybody look how beautiful these noodles are and one thing is you're gonna get a huge long noodle so sometimes I just break them up but you can see that's quite a bit right there that would almost be enough for one serving and then you top the, the tempeh on top of that mm -hmm. I bet you it's pretty filling all that fiber so much fiber fiber is the theme it is there you have it. So you see, that makes a lot. It does. One zucchini. So that could be uh, your New Year's resolution. Just eat more fiber. Yes, so if you're tuning in, it's 2019. That's the resolution. Eat more fiber. Okay, I'm going to check on these guys. See how our tempeh is doing. Just browning it up a little bit. But you can see the texture is almost reminiscent of, say, a crumbled, uh, a ground beef or something like it's mm -hmm. got that crumbly texture it does and it has like a chewy texture too it does it has a little bit of a give mm -hmm. brown this a bit so this recipe is actually not new to me or linda we've both had this before and the reason why we're doing it today is because it's actually kind of something that we've partnered with before yes i think it was two years ago at the ottawa veg fest yep i was cooking this i was doing sort of a healthier spin on Italian food. So I was making tempeh bolognese and I was getting set up for my demo mm -hmm. and I had all the ingredients, but I knew something was missing. So I sent my husband over to Linda's booth and he came back with cheese. Of course. And we chopped cheese on everybody's uh, tempeh bolognese and it went so well together so that we wanted to recreate it again. Yes, I love it. So you can see it's just browning up a little bit here. And we're gonna have the recipe for this tempeh bolognese on our website yes. so you can find a link to that in the uh, in the comments below just brown this a bit more so you can see it is getting nice and brown this means okay. it's time to add in our base so our onions carrots and celery i'm just going to add these guys in and i'm going to add another little pinch of salt just to help release the water from these Use veggies. Sea salt for that? Yeah, so we're using sea salt today. Actually, you know what? We're using Himalayan salt today. Okay. So you could use Himalayan, you could use uh, sea salt. Um, I tend to prefer those over table salt, so. Why is that? If you take a quick look at the back of your table salt, you'll notice that there are a few things in there, and one of them is actually sugar. Really? Yeah, so look there's at the back. Salt in you sugar? There's, there's sugar, sugar in salt? salt? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So when you look at sea salt or Himalayan salt, you're going to see that the only ingredient is salt. Okay. So it's it's just one of those things. They find ways to sneak sugar in everything. That's so unbelievable. I mean, with New Year's resolutions, many people are looking to reduce sugar. So that's mm -hmm. just one little way where you could probably take sugar out of your diet that's unnecessary. Even it. Exactly. So I'm going to keep these just a little bit. Mm, smelling good. And sometimes you'll find it gets a little bit sticky on the base of the pan. Yep. So I always have just a bit of water on the side. Oh, Drop sure. it in. Deglaze. Deglaze the pan. Yep. 
scrape that off. So I don't use too much oil in this, so that's, okay. you know, the tempeh tends to absorb it. So we just wanna make sure that we stop things from burning on the bottom. Um, I'm all gonna right. this up a little bit. So we'll let this cook for a few minutes, mm -hmm. and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay. Are those onions supposed to brown then? So basically we want them to just become a bit translucent so that we know we're cooked through. Just check on the onions and you see that they're kind of a little bit clear. Yep. You know, you're ready to add in your oregano and basil. Mm. Then we're going to add in our... About a teaspoon of each? It's about a teaspoon of each, yeah. And then this is about, <laughs> this is about um, two cloves of garlic minced. We love our garlic. Oh yes. We've been talking about garlic nonstop today because we both love it. It's good for you though, right? So good for you. It's antifungal, antibacterial, it's perfect bad for winter. Breath. It can give you bad breath, but it does keep the bugs away. So okay. and it's the vampires. Like, and yeah, anyone else who wants to get close to you. Mm -hmm. But it's it's great for health, right? You, there's their ups and downs. So you can smell how delicious this is already. Now we're gonna add in, mm. I'm gonna guesstimate. Okay. So we're going for about a cup of wine. I'm a big fan of guesstimating. So you, could you use white or does it have to be red? Oh, you want red. You want a nice, a nice uh, full, full body red. red. Yeah, okay. something that will really infuse flavor into the tempeh. Okay. So once you've added your wine, you want to bring it to a boil. Mm -hmm. And basically we're going to cook down the wine. So like we did in our last video, we're infusing beer into mushrooms. In this case, we're going to infuse the wine flavor into the tempeh. Beautiful. And red wine is good for you too. Is it yeah, full of antioxidants? It is. So there's, there. I love this question because I get this all the time about how red wine is good for you. And there's even been studies saying it's better to drink a glass of red wine than go to the gym. So some of that I science, the wine yeah. To the gym. So some of that science, unfortunately, is a bit hyped up, and it comes from tests that were done on rats where they were using the compound called resveratrol from wine. Okay. And they're feeding high doses of it to rats. So I think it's something you'd have to drink like hundred bottles of wine to get that amount of, oh, of the, that that's antioxidant. A lot of wine. That's a lot of wine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, drink it in moderation and enjoy it, cook with it and, and go to the gym. Yeah. And go to the gym too. I mean, it's the new year. Yep. Some people have resolutions for that, but I just recommend, you know, just make that part of your life. Going mm -hmm. to the gym, you can have a glass of wine, but go to the gym, make sure you're, you're cooking for yourself, healthy food. Yep. So go to the gym and then have the wine though. Yes. It's bad to do it in reverse. You could try. I believe if anyone could do it, you could do it. <laughs> you could do it. So we're just going to cook this down a bit. When you're looking in there, Linda, there's hardly mm -hmm. any wine left. It's almost dry. Yep. So that's kind of what we're looking for. We really want to cook off all that wine and just infuse the tempeh with flavor. Mm -hmm. And at this point, we can now add in our strained tomatoes. And if you want, you could fill up the jar with a bit of water too and get oh, okay. off every last little bit of those strained tomatoes going to mix this in and allow it to simmer and so this how long does you have to cook it for I'd say we'd let it simmer for about 20 minutes just to really allow everything to meld together okay so while you're doing this you could be sipping your wine exactly and just waiting you know and maybe plating your zucchinis you could quickly cook your zucchini while you're kind of waiting for this to come together mm -hmm. but yeah as you can see it's really easy to do yes not complicated at all we've got our veggies in there and one thing I love to actually add in which we're not doing today is you could add some spinach add some arugula oh, you can kale. really kale add some kale in yeah yeah if you're into leafy greens and that's your new year's resolution by all means add any leafy green you'd like in there you could either add in some chopped broccoli very small little pieces of broccoli maybe yep. a little bit of cauliflower or frozen even. frozen so easy yeah it's just so easy to add mm -hmm. in extra vegetables I always tell people, you know, if there's not greens in it in the recipe, you can still throw them in anyways. Right. So we're just going to let this simmer here. So what we'll do is we'll pretend that it's been. All right. So we're ready. Do so we yeah. need to add salt and pepper or something? Yeah, we will add salt and pepper. So what we're going to do here is we're just, we've allowed it to simmer for about 20 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to add in it a few pinches more of salt. Okay. And I always recommend everyone you know, we're gonna try it after and see for seasoning, but we really didn't add much salt in here, so that's why I'm adding in a bit more. I'm gonna add in some pepper. You should always add your salt at the end, right? Yeah, we haven't really added hardly any salt, so I felt it was okay just to add a little bit here, but we're gonna try it again and see how it is for the flavor, and if it needs a bit more salt, we'll do that. Mm. I'm gonna mix this in, and 
I find, as I was saying at the beginning, sometimes the acidity, acidity of the tomatoes, sorry, I'll begin. I find that sometimes the acidity of the tomatoes can be a bit too much or a bit strong. So what I like to do is just add a tiny little bit of maple syrup in there. That's just going to cut the acidity and I'm talking maybe a teaspoon. Okay. But that's just enough to cut the acidity of the tomatoes. Could you use agave or something like that? Yeah, you that? could try that agave. Right? I mean, traditionally people add an actual sugar. So right. um, you could use whatever you want as a sweetener. I mean, even if you had date paste, you could add that okay. in. So you could use whatever you want to do to add a little bit of sweetness. We're just using maple syrup because that's what we have today. So okay. um, what we'll do is I'm just going to try a little bit and see how the salt is. So I always recommend trying your food because it's very scary to say feed other people if you haven't tasted it and you've gone to all this effort of cooking. Just try it and see if the flavors are what you're looking for. Okay. So I'm going to give it a try. You can adjust. So I'm going to add a little bit of this tempeh bolognese on top of our zucchini noodles. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. It's so good. Look at that. Mm. So that's a lot of noodles we're getting. So that's a, a very generous helping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is just the frozen round of cheese and you take a regular cheese grater and you just Look at grate that. it right onto the top. Grates so nicely when it's it frozen. It is, it's so nice. And then you can keep it in the freezer and for use it much your... longer than the best before date and then just keep it to add to any of your dishes, pasta. So look at that. Delicious tempeh bolognese. Good Thanks, work. Amy. That looks amazing. Do we get to eat now? Yes, we definitely have to try it. Okay. So we need some forks. Forks. You can see that these zucchini noodles are just mm. massive. Mmm. That's so good. Okay. Thanks, so, Amy. Another delicious meal from Amy Longard. Let's dig in.